Examining Cafe Value Podcast. I'm Jason Gilbo at JGilbo11. With me is Russell Clay at Russell J. Clay. Uh, taking a look at FanDuel and DraftKings are our cafe value in terms of position. Um, I know you and I have some similarities this week uh, in terms of our three of each, um, but also a couple differences, and I know we kind of differ a little bit here in terms of kind of the site scoring for a few guys as well. Certainly, and, and I think one thing to point out, especially you know with our tools, is there's a big projections tab um and you can go and research you know plug in what projections you like we got four for four and and dfsr um we also you know have our own little you know giddy up with our cafe value and i mean i just look at that pretty pretty closely throughout my research just for reassurance like as the projections update, am I seeing the same things as the projection and the cafe value and, and the cash? And I mean, pretty, it's been pretty consistent, you know, from, from James White to Spencer Ware to, you know, all these values, Charles Sims, and, and we'll get into it. But yeah, I, I think at the very least, even if you're not using it to, you know, necessarily build every lineup, I mean, at least having that backup as, as a fact checker for, for some of your logic I mean, that's that's at least what you should use it for, you know? Yeah, definitely agree. I mean, uh, as you mentioned, I mean, a couple different projection sets, so that definitely helps out uh, in terms of, and, you know, they all generate different lineups, so it's pretty cool to see kind of the comparisons, and, and you can go to your generated lineups tab, and there's a little magnifying glass, and you can see what that, that lineup would score with each individual projection. So if you want to do comparison, that's probably the easier way to do it once you once you built a lineup there. And, and again, and I know this is week one, so I want to give a little intro to everyone. Um, you're playing, you know, not just yourself, you're, you're playing other people too. So you got to keep in play you. <laughs> you got to keep in mind what that ownership percentage is going to be. And I, I think the cafe value is sometimes a really good indicator of who's, who's going to be the chalky plays. I mean, you talked about Marvin Jones this week as well. Um, I, I think a lot of those types are at least very important to notice for, for um, ownership percentage in, in tournaments, you know? Yeah, definitely agree. I mean, kind of speaking of, of chalky plays, I mean, jumping into our quarterbacks, you, yeah. you, you're talking DraftKings, I'm talking FanDuel. That's going to be how our setup's going to go for the rest of the show. Um, ours are very similar in terms of, of quarterbacks and what we have. Um, top three f for me in terms of value, just sorting-wise, is going to be Dak Prescott, Carson Wentz, and Russell Wilson. Um, obviously, Dak Prescott. I'm sick of talking about Dak Prescott, to be honest. I mean, I feel like every every podcast it's it's been that way, but there is a lot in favor for him. I mean, you got a decent total, obviously a great offensive line, a, a bad Giants defense. I see the play there in terms of, of being a bare minimum. Um, why he's kind of the the top cafe value? It's not really a surprise to me. Um, in terms of going to uh, high exposure to him, I'm probably going to balance myself out, but there is no question that he is a decent value to kind of help fit those pieces in. So this is my perspective um, on FanDuel this week. I'm playing uh, him in cash. I, I just don't see how you can avoid that because it just opens up those high-end wide receivers. And in tournaments, yeah, you can play that totally differently. But in cash, I mean, yeah. You don't want Antonio Brown going for 35 points on you, you know, and, and then him getting 15 from, from Dak, and then you're just like, you know, you're toast unless your quarterback throws four or five touchdowns. So um, I, I he's locked in for me in cash. Tournaments, I think you can definitely hedge off, but, yeah, I mean, just a super value. On DK, I look at it a little differently. Um, I think you can move to some of the higher range uh, of outcomes, guys. I mean, we're looking at Russell Wilson. He's, he's for us on both sites as sort of a cash game guy. Um, I think that's a great bump up. Um, I just love the floor on, on that play, and I think he's got the same type of rushing ability, you know, obviously even better than Dak. So um, I, I like him quite a bit. My other guy was Blaine Gabbert. Now, that's, that's really just a deep, 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 deep tournament play and probably not viable at all. But I think it is important to know there are other options down there for, for nothing, you know, that bare minimum play. Um, and, and my buddy Scott Barrett, you know, he did some research on playing those min-priced um, quarterbacks last year. And they basically said, you know, they averaged 12 to 15 a game. So it's like even those min plays and not great spots, you know, sometimes they do work out. 
Uh, so I'm not playing Gabbert, but something to think about at least. Yeah, and the other Bearman guy for me on FanDuel was Carson Wentz. And, mm-hmm. and I feel like Wentz is obviously in a better spot than Gabbert is. Um, you know, at home against the Cleveland defense that, that you know, not very good. Decent total there. But I can't get behind Wentz. Nothing more than a deep, deep, deep GPP play as well. Um, it, I mean, one, you don't know what to really expect from him being a rookie. Um, I, I still just think it's going to be a little too much for him to handle at 5K. I just feel like I'd rather just go Prescott if I am going that route. I'm not really looking to swerve off Prescott with another Bearman play. I'm more looking to swerve off and kind of pay up. And, and I have Russell Wilson as well um, at 8,500. I like him quite a bit. And, and I know Doug Baldwin's been popping up right along with him. So it, kind of an interesting duo there. Certainly. Um, anyway, I mean, that's enough. That's enough Dak Prescott talk for uh, a lifetime, I think. Me, me and Jason have, I don't know how many times I've said his name. I think I said his name wrong at least the first 10 times we did it. I was calling him like Doc or something. I don't know. But uh, that's clearly fixed itself probably from the repetition of just saying his name on every single pod. So um, anyway, let's move on to running back to another guy we've literally talked about all week, Spencer Ware. Um, I, he popped up for me as, you know, the top cafe value on DK. Um, where is he at for you? Uh, he comes in at second, but I think because I have D'Angelo Williams on the slate, uh, for the Monday night games for FanDuel, it's going to be a little bit different, but yeah, where is right up there? He comes in at second. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, um, I mean, I, I'm kind of looking at him in cash. I, I don't necessarily like him as much on FanDuel. I think there's so much more room to move. I like paying up. Um, as you mentioned, for D'Angelo Williams on FanDuel, especially on those Monday night slates. So um, that's certainly what you're looking at there. But in terms of, you know, values on DK, I like those those 4,400 range running backs. I mean, I like Charles Sims. I like TJ Eldon a lot. So... I mean, I, I get I get the appeal to Spencer Ware. I get what the optimizer's telling me. But I can't help but think in tournaments, I like Sims and Yeldon, you know? I definitely agree. I mean, in terms of tournaments, I, I really do think you can kind of spin off of Ware. And, and we're kind of getting a lot of, you know, reports about, you know, Wes maybe getting getting some carries, you know, Andy Reid probably not going to be the most generous in terms of, of just really letting wear loose. Um, you know, does he give you a decent floor? It's a great matchup. Yes. Um, I, I do like him in cash games. I, I'm with you. I do like him more on DraftKings than I do over on FanDuel. 5,400, definitely not a bad price. Um, it, I guess if he kind of fits into your lineup, I'm okay with it. But yeah, I, I like D'Angelo Williams more. I like Lamar Miller more. I feel like there are certainly decent you know, guys in that seven seven thousand range that I feel like if I can get those guys in with mid tier wide receivers, I'm going to be going that route. And again, I played a lot of Thursday cash, um, and I guess I can reveal that now. But I mean, I played D'Angelo and Gurley, you know, for running backs and cash, and I felt like I was pretty comfortable with how it ended up because I played Dax. So, uh, just something to keep in mind in terms of roster construction. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, uh, third back for you uh, was a little different for me. Uh, I had Christine Michael, um, you know, facing Miami at home. Obviously, there was news about him starting. Um, uh, in terms of stock, I'm not going to say that just shoots him right up the, the rankings chart for me because I still expect Rawls to cut in and get some carries. But, you, uh, you know, you look at this, where and Michael could be in a situation where there is a little bit of, of secondary pieces that come in and take away some carries that really limits their ceiling, uh, which is why I don't really like them in GPPs. I think Michael's Michael doesn't really have the appeal for me. I'm kind of not looking to touch the Seattle running back situation and just let that one play out. Yeah, where um, Kristen Michael and um, Ryan Matthews are three guys this week that I, I know a lot of people like them, and I just don't. I don't feel that comfortable with them for whatever reason. Um, so, I mean, I do respect, you know, the Chris and Michael upside here for, for sure. I think, you know, 100 yards and a touchdown is certainly in his range of outcomes if things, you know, go correctly against that Dolphins team. But um, I, I could see, you know, based on how his career has gone, you know, I could see a fumble in the first 10 carries. We we don't have any good samples of Chris and Michael in the regular season. So, 
I think that's something to at least be aware of in your cash game. Um, certainly viable in tournaments. Yeah, definitely agree. And, and one more thing, I mean, all three of those guys, spread set up really well for them um, mm. in terms of, of game theory and, and kind of how the flow is supposed to go. And they do have low totals, I mean, outside D'Angelo Williams. Um, but you look at their team totals, they are high, and you expect the other teams to you know, score hardly at all. So um, in terms of that, I, I do like them in, in that regards. But, yeah, I, I think kind of the ceiling's a little bit capped. Absolutely. Um, looking at wide receiver here, um, ours are different um, a little bit. Obviously, I have Antonio Brown, Doug Baldwin, and, and Odell Beckham, which is still very odd to me because it's just my personal rankings of liking DeAndre Hopkins and Julio Jones more than those two if I'm paying up. But I can't argue against them. I obviously can see why the optimizer goes with those guys. They're, they're high-ceiling performers. Um, the matchup for Brown isn't in, in really enticing, um, especially if Marcus Wheaton doesn't play. I just feel like... I don't know. I mean, who really comes up and thrives to take a little bit of pressure off Brown? I, I don't know if that's going to be the case. Bro, Eli Rogers, my man. No. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's tough. The, I like I like D'Angelo Williams and Antonio Brown on FanDuel. Um, but, I mean, as far as cash games, I, I think Julio, Julio popped up for me. Um, along with Marvin Jones, who I think is just – he just wasn't priced correctly for week one. I mean, I think that's fairly obvious. I don't know how comfortable I am getting a ton of exposure to him. Um, I do like the play. I like the matchup. I like everything about it. It just feels like in tournaments he's going to be super chalky, and I don't know if I like Marvin Jones at 30% in the tournament, you know? I, I, don't, know if, I don't know if I like that. Yeah, I mean, he's he's going to be chalky. Um, he, he's going to be a, a wide receiver three that a lot of people use and plug in. And he's just going to be one of those guys where because you can toss an Odell Beckham, Julio Jones, another guy, and, and he'll be there. Um, I don't mind him on, on, on FanDuel, but um, I, I do like other guys in the range. I mean, Baldwin is, is right around the 6K range. I like Moncrief for in that same game who's at a very similar price. So I just feel like he gets lost for me a little bit more on Fando. I don't mind him on DraftKings, but as you were saying, if you wanted to make a swerve, I'm completely okay with that as well. Yeah, and uh, I mean, so I don't think the narrative of Odell Beckham doing bad against the Cowboys is a real thing. I think that was just kind of, you know, two games that, that happened that way. I don't think they're going to be able to – I don't think anyone can shut him down, you know, if uh, – if the matchup goes that way. Um, but either way, I think that game will be slower. I just think as a play, Julio is a better play this week. It's not knocking Odell Beckham. It's not that he has a bad matchup. It's just that I think Julio is a slightly better play. So um, I think that's the move here, and that's what came up on the optimizer. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much going with that. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I, Odell Beckham, I mean, for me, I, I don't mind 9100 because um, he pops up in mine, but I don't know. I still still like Hopkins. I still like Jones a little bit more um, in terms of paying up at that route. And then, obviously, I like a lot of guys in the 7K, 8K range, too. So I don't know how much exposure I'm going to have to him. Uh, probably just kind of a GPP guy. I don't think he'll find my way his way into the cash lineups. Uh, Doug Baldwin, 6700 on FanDuel. I really like that price for him. Um, in this matchup against Miami, obviously the Seattle offense can be frustrating in terms of getting the Wilson target right, but I feel like Baldwin, um, in terms of that price, is, is worth that risk. Yeah, I know. I agree. Certainly when you're stacking with Wilson, very much, very much worth the price. I, I like that quite a bit. Uh, diving into tight ends here, um, obviously you and I, I and ours are completely different. I mean, um, Jordan Reed here, uh, for me, obviously, you don't get him here on DraftKings. I do on FanDuel with the Monday night slate. Um, I like him. I, I, I think, as you stated earlier in the show, that FanDuel is a little bit easier to move around, a little bit more easy to kind of be diverse, and, and Reed kind of fits in. I, I think it actually might opens up well for him to do well here against the Steelers. I like Reed, especially on FanDuel. It's fairly easy to fit him in. So, I mean, that's... Uh, that's just an easy move if you can make it. You know, some lineups aren't going to work out, and there are tons of values. I mean, it, I, tight end is weird this year. Um, 
because there's a lot of guys that haven't quite emerged or in new roles, and we're not quite sure how they're going to, you know, work out with Clive Walford, Jared Cook, Vance McDonald, like Eric Ebron, and, and just all this randomness. I think if you can, you plug in Jordan Reed, feel pretty comfortable about, you know, what you're getting on Monday night. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And who came in at the top 10 in for you? Uh, Zach Ertz, my cash game guy this weekend. I don't think a lot of I, – I, I don't think he's going to be a cash game guy. Um, so I think you're going to be pretty unique in that aspect, and I, I'm comfortable throwing him in there. Um, I like – you know, I don't necessarily like Ertz this week, or, or I mean Carson Wentz this week, but I, I do like Ertz in this matchup. I think, you know, there's going to be a lot of targets to go around and not many – um, you know, people to take those targets other than him and Jordan Matthews. So even if Wentz just throws, you know, 25, 30 times, how many of those are going to go to Ertz? You know, I, I'd have to imagine at least eight like, at the minimum. So um, I, I like Ertz quite a bit this week. Yeah, I do too. And he comes in third here for me um, behind Delaney Walker, which I, I do like. If Reed, if I'm spinning off a of Reed for a cheaper guy in cash, I do like Ertz as well. And, and Walker in the middle, um, I don't like on FanDuel. I feel 6,500 is is a little bit high for, I think, his ceiling this week. He, he does always have the PPR appeal, but that doesn't necessarily translate well into, into FanDuel scoring. So there's going to be weeks where I do use Walker on FanDuel, but I don't think this is going to be one. Um, I, I like Gary Barnage. I like Kobe Fleener. I like other options um, at tight end over Walker on FanDuel. So I think he's just kind of the odd man out there in that list. But I, I do have Ertz. I think 5700 is a reasonable price tag. I agree. Um, Delaney Walker, I like him. Obviously, he's still in play on, on DK because he's only 4,500. Him and Ertz are, are right there for me in a PPR format. Um, on on FanDuel, um, I like Delaney a little bit less. So, yeah, I agree. Uh, more of a tournament guy there than anything else. Yeah, definitely. And I you know you have Julius Thomas there as um, one of your values. Kind of That's, a sneaky guy, right? That's a fun one. I don't think anyone's going to be on him. And, and with the way that game's potentially going to go, I mean, there's certainly a two touchdown, you know, game in this range of higher, higher end range of outcomes. And, and I mean, if, if people are, people are not going to be on that, you know, uh, I think you could get him at five to 7%, especially, you know, with Gronk being out, Martellus Bennett's going to get a lot of ownership. Um, and as I mentioned, all those other guys I talked about. So yeah, Julius Thomas, I see 5 to 7% there, maybe even less. Um, and at 3800 on DK, I think that's great value. Yeah, I definitely do too. You do have a lot of value tight ends there that might steal away some ownership. I think it kind of cuts into what he could be. Yep. Uh, looking at defenses here, and for me, I, I love all three of these guys, uh, Kansas City, Minnesota, and Houston. Um, decent range uh, of prices, Minnesota being your cheapest at 4600 um, it's hard to argue against all three of these. I think everything sets up well. You look at the opposing team totals, all very low. Um, two of the three teams are home, are favored, all of them. Um, Kansas City, I think, out of the three for me is my favorite. Houston, a little bit more of a GPP play, I think. And then Minnesota, I kind of rank as the value. So as I think about the Chiefs more and more, um, they are missing their top pass rusher. I think that's an important distinction to make when looking at last year. Um, will the Chargers be able to do well against that defense even without him? Absolutely not. Um, but is maybe the upside a little a little lower than um, what I initially thought going into this week? I, I think so. So are they still a top? They're still a top two play for me. Um, but I, I might be hedging off them a little bit and maybe just, you know, going with the Seahawks to make, to make an easy move if I'm paying up. Yeah, definitely. And in that Houston team, in, in terms of upside, that's where I see kind of making a move on FanDuel for 200 less. I, I do like their upside at home against, uh, a Jay Cutler led team that we know has, you know, shown off the pick six ability is <laughs> kind of been looking for. So, um, I like Houston. I think. Minnesota, for me, I, I've been talking about them a couple times this week, and it's just I, I feel like they're too cheap. They're too overlooked in a matchup. I know they're on the road. I know the situation with the quarterback kind of throws a wrench into their theory a little bit. 
I just don't see Mariota in that really core receivers or, or running game doing much against this top ten defense. Yeah, man. Um, I I like the Texans. I like I like their price on both sides. I think they're cash game viable. That's that's just the move. Um, I mean, just if there's a pick six radar. I think it's squarely on Cutler this week. I mean, obviously, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick against the Bengals is also directly on the radar. They they popped up here. But, I mean, if you're looking for a pick six, unless you're looking at, like, Carson Wentz or something, but you don't really want to play the Browns, I mean, Texans just look like it. So um, I certainly like that. Um as far as on on DK, I, I'm just looking at the Texans here for for really the top cash option. I, I mean, I think the Bengals popped up here too. I don't mind them, but I just think we always have to worry about Marshall and Decker. And I mean, we've seen they've moved the ball, you know, all last year on good defenses. So I I don't know. It's it's tough to really go all in on a Bengals day. No, I agree. I I actually kind of like the Jets. I like Decker and Marshall. I think they're going to actually match up well with, with those corners. I think they're both going to avoid Jones for the most part from what I've read. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm i with you. I think that's kind of an avoid. And I, Did you mention your third already? Yeah, it, it was the Raiders. Um, I, think that's oh. an int- <laughs> I, I think that's an interesting one to look at, though, in terms of cafe value because they price them down. Um, I do like the Raiders this year. I just think, you know, in the Dome against the Saints – you know, I I can't help but be a little intrigued by that popping up there, though, because I don't know. I, it's not a play, but it is very interesting to see that, especially with projections included. Yeah, no, I, I agree, because, I mean, I, I like the Raiders going forward, not yeah. really in a week one matchup, but, yeah, I, I do like the Raiders. I, I will be having some GPP defense shares of them a lot this year. Um, but, yeah, I, I think – it is kind of an interesting that one that makes you think you. It's not like you just you know go over and go. Eh, nah. It's like, huh. Okay. So and rule number one of week one, we don't know, you know, how some of these teams are going to look early on in the season, and we see this all the time where bad teams, even bad teams, look good sometimes early in the season. I don't think the Raiders are bad. I actually think they're pretty good, especially on on D. They have some serious athletes. So. I mean, we love Drew Brees at home. We automatically pencil him in for a huge output. But this Raiders D, they're pretty good. So I, I don't know. I, I think it should at least make you think about maybe going all in with Brees, you know, if anything else. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, decent corners going up against Cooks as well. So there's a lot of potential there. I, I know you and I, we did we covered the Raiders early on a few weeks ago, and we nothing but good things to say about them. Right. So that's going to wrap it up with the Examining Cafe Value Pod. Be sure to check out our optimizer. This is solely based on what we were talking about today. Uh, Be sure to go over and check that out and also subscribe to our YouTube account.